This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Avoid the Maze Conversation with Eric Teplitz. And Eric, I know you have your podcast up and running, and it seems like I'm getting notifications from you all the time, like you're a busy really? guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, well, yeah, doing the things. <laughs> <laughs> so before we went on air, um, I mentioned to you that... Um, I'm trying to get myself more in focus with myself, with things around me. And so I'm taking this, um, I think it's seven or eight week course. Um, I don't even want to look and see when it ends because then I'll really get hyper. Um, but the, the, what this course is supposed to be helping me with and the others in the group is to de-stress before something happens. Um, some of us know what our triggers are. And so, you know, preparing for it ahead of time so that um, you go into uh, a meeting with your boss and, you know, you're not defensive um, or uh, you broke your um, husband's favorite gadget in the house and, you know, you're afraid to say anything when he gets home. Um, just life things that happen, but I'm taking this and I'm having a hard time following the pattern of the course, but yet at the end of the day, when I write in my journal, I can tell you where I did all these exercises and became mindful during the day. So am I the only one who takes a class who needs to be perfect? Or um... <laughs> I believe you are. I think you oh. are. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I think that, uh, you know, per per our brief conversation before we got started today, what I think is interesting is just observing um, ourselves in whatever the scenario is. So in this case, it's a class and maybe you're wanting to get the most out of it that you can, presumably. And you know, one way that I think about this is that whatever is in your way is the way. So in other words, whatever comes up is what you're, what you need to be working with. And it's going to be different for everyone, even those taking the same class, right? So in other words, you work with what comes up for you. And the way I think of it, if I'm taking a class and I'm guessing that the stakes are, the only stakes for this are your own personal development. Is that right? Like, right, it's not right. like you need to get a certain grade or no. you need to get a certain score in order to qualify for a certain thing. No. Okay. So really you only then stand to gain and what you end up taking from the course might be unique to you. And it might be part of the plan of the course it might be part of the intention of the course, and it might not. But it really doesn't matter, does it? If you're getting something out of it, if you're if you're benefiting in some way, and if you're gaining some kind of insight into yourself, or if you're learning even one technique that you can apply to your life right now that helps you, then from my vantage point, it's a win. Now I don't know if you if you're attached to getting a specific result from the course or learning something specific. That I, I'm not. Sure, because so, I don't know. Yeah. The so when I decided to sign up for this, um, my main reason was I'm, I was feeling very scattered. Okay. Um, and the end of last year, beginning of this year, um, I was just putting so much energy into this podcast, Avoid the Maze, that I wasn't satisfied with just doing it once a week or twice a week. You know, I was up until about March, I was doing like eight a week plus my other shows. Wow. And then I had to take a step back and go, wait a second, this is hurting my health. Um, mm -hmm. You know, am I really, you know, helping others doing it one after another? Um, and more so, what am I doing to me and my, fa and my family? Okay. And so I started cutting back. Um, but yet I felt like I didn't have that toolbox. I didn't have the right words to tell somebody, no, you know, I can't record with you until 
September, October. Um, to me, I, it, it sounded phony to me. Okay, Karen, you can't mm. be that busy that you can't do something. So in taking this, um, I knew it was going to help me zone in on what's important to me, not judging myself for saying yes or no, um, not trying to be the perfect person for everybody else. And so I was excited. Hey, this is good, you know. Can I interrupt for just one second? Sure. So what, what this specific course, what is the, let's say, goal of the course or what is the theme of the course? So it's finding your personal intelligence. You know, what is draw, what is making you do the things that you do? And is that the, is that the pattern you want to follow? Um, so it's so, sort of a self-awareness raising yes, course? Right. Okay. So, I mean, the first thing I found out, which of course I knew was, you know, I'm a people pleaser, but <laughs> pleasing people didn't necessarily mean pleasing me. Mm -hmm. And when I finally got that, it was like, okay, but how do you change that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and do I have to change it? You know, yeah. but now I'm understanding it a little bit more. Um, but then they give you these exercises and, you know, and they are recommendations. I will admit that, you know, you do this at when you first wake up, you do this at nine o'clock in the morning, you, you know, and you can pick your own schedule. And I picked my schedule, but I'm not a good schedule person except for podcasting. Anything else, it's like, wait a second, life happens. Mm. And so I found myself, we're in the third week now, and I found myself the other day um, and I was traveling with my husband and thinking, I haven't done any of my exercises today. <laughs> oh, what a terrible person I am. And then I thought, no, I'm not. But then I felt like I was letting down my whole group that I was taking this class with. <laughs> and then you even asked the question, I believe, before. And it's like, well, yes, it's about supporting the group. But my path is not the same as theirs. And I, how, are you, how are you letting your uh, the other people in the group down if you don't, let's say, do these exercises or, you know, how is that letting the other people down? So up until today, I thought, oh, if I'm not doing them and it's part of the training course and we're all supposed to do them, then, you know, Karen, you better just jump on board and, and do it as well. But today I finally realized we're a team, but we're not, we're not dependent on each other. Yeah. Like in other words, the other people aren't counting on you to do your piece of something. No, absolutely yeah. not. You know, yeah. the only thing they're counting on me for is if they say something and I, and I really support it, you know, acknowledge it because we all need to be acknowledged for things. Um, and that we're all polite to each other. We don't judge each other what we're doing. And that's the thing that I was judging myself, thinking, what are they going to think of me? <laughs> well, you know, it's it can be part of the trap in the, in the self-improvement world. Uh, and I know someone very close to me, actually, who avoids all of this kind of content for the very reason that rather than being inspirational to this person, it has the opposite effect and it makes the person judge themselves even more harshly because of the way that they're viewing it. In other words, they're taking this, this content in and realizing all of the ways in which they can allow themselves to judge themselves for not doing things well enough or perfectly enough or uh, all the ways in which they're failing by not practicing these things. And that's not what we want, right? Like, that's not why you're taking this course. Right. Um, so, but again, I believe that whatever comes up for you is the material that you are to be working with. It's information. Your response and reaction to things is, is really important information because ultimately that is, you know, you are the one that, when the course is over, you're still with you. 
and you still have to live with you and you still have to be in the world, whatever you did or did not get out of the course. And ultimately, the way I see it is it's it's kind of about the way that you relate to yourself and, and your relationship with yourself. And also, isn't it interesting to notice you mentioned that the group dynamic is such that you're there to support each other and affirm each other and acknowledge each other and encourage each other and not judge each other. But each of you individually might be judging yourself, right? Yes, we are. <laughs> and, you know, and that's, you know, this is a tough, this is a tough thing. I, I would say that, you know, I know from my own experience and I, um, in, I still do this, of course, I'm human. I still judge myself unfairly or in unhelpful ways or in harsh ways, but I I would like, well, I know I've gotten better over the years. It's been a process and it doesn't mean I don't still do it or you know succumb to that, but I know from experience, it's possible to get better at it. What I mean is like to, uh, to be nicer to yourself, one of the fears I think we have is that we, we feel that we have to hold ourselves to a really high standard in order to get the best out of ourselves. And that if we let ourselves slip at all, then we're going to suffer for it. We're going right. to, we're going to like, you know, be less than what we could be. But in the end there's, and, and that intention I think is a good one, right? We want to be our best selves. We want to show up in the best way we can, but there's a point at which this it's, and I think it's good to have a high standard for yourself. But there's this there's this invisible line that's crossed between like having this high standard and being just your own worst enemy and just being like relentless on yourself. And it it there's and it took me a really long time <laughs> to understand that this actually isn't helpful. The impulse is a good one. The impulse is a helpful one. The impulse is wanting to do my best. But it really took me seemingly, you know, just I don't know how how long, how many years, but I eventually caught on and realized this this um, task be this task mastering of myself, this like whipping myself to try to get the best out of myself, actually isn't getting the best out of myself. Right. It's actually not helpful. If it were helpful, maybe we could argue in favor of it. But I was finding for myself it wasn't helpful. It was actually harmful. Well, and that's, and that's how I started feeling when I started taking this. I mean, the first week, you know, I did everything the way the sequence is set up. And I understand why it's set up that way, because if I was a different personality type, I may, I may need that sequence. Some people do. Um, but I was doing it and I was getting frustrated and then I could hear this voice saying to me you know oh just do it you know what's your problem and it's like uh my problem is I don't want to do it right now and I don't see a reason for doing it right now um and so the second week I got a little what I th called sloppy okay mm -hmm. I would do it I wouldn't do it I would finish the exercises I wouldn't finish the exercises I would um, on the on the videos, I would scroll to the end and not even want to watch it because I just didn't want to deal with it. But you then, chose to take this course, yeah. by the way. No one said you have to do this. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and um, then this week, being the third week, um, I just took this shift, and it was like, well, a lot of those things are talking about. I'm doing them. But I'm not stopping necessarily and say, oh, it's nine o'clock. It's time to do this. Okay. It's okay. Eric is about to call in and we're about to do a podcast. And oh, no, that's okay with me. I don't, I don't need to prepare. I'm fine. Oh, I have a podcast at four o'clock and it's with, you know, somebody else and, you know, it's making me a little nervous. Okay. But I, I may think about it in the middle of our podcast and I might do something internally that just like lets me breathe and I'm fine for it. And yet in the context of this class, so to speak, um, is it a virtual? I feel like I'm online? bucking the system. <laughs> hmm. And, and that, and that doesn't feel good as I take it. No, it, it 
on one hand, no, it does not feel good. On the other hand, it's like, yeah, this is good because this is reality. Okay. It's, it's not, okay, let's stop right now. Um, for instance, when I first got my Apple watch, uh, somebody suggested that every hour I push the button on it and I do 60 seconds of breathing. Okay. Breathing exercises. I did it for the first month and I wanted to throw my watch away hmm. because it was like, I'm in the middle of something. Now I got to stop and, and do it. But you stuck with it for a month. I did because I'm compulsive. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm saying yeah. that's impressive, right? Like you, you persevered through it. And honestly, I think that that is incredible. Like you were able to, I think it's, I think it's a really good thing. Anytime we're trying something new, you know, we have to give it enough of a chance for it to take and for us to have experience with it and understand how, how it's working for us or not. And it can be tricky determining, like, are we giving up too soon? Do we need to give it longer? You know, um, then again, if it's not producing results for us, is there any point to sticking with it? And it's, it's, a, it's sort of like you have to determine that for yourself. But I, in my opinion, 30 days is a great amount of time to try anything that you might be experimenting with, because it gives you enough time to, to come to and to come to some conclusion about it, not just from your own biases and, and like opinions, but from actual experience with it. And I think the 30 days is generally a really good amount of time to give something a try, whatever that something is, sure. and then reassess and say, hey, is this working for me? Uh, is there a way in which if it's not working for me in this way that I'm doing it, is there a way I can tweak it so that it would work better for me, knowing me and, and what works for me? Uh, or is this something like, you know what, I've tried it, it's not working, let's move on. And any of those responses is fair, especially if you've put in like, you know, 30 days. I can give you many examples from my own life where I've done just that. I did something as an experiment as a tr for a trial period. And sometimes it took and sometimes it didn't. But even if it doesn't, you can there's a certain amount of peace that comes with knowing you've given it a try. You've given it you know, a fair try. And I don't apologize for things that don't work for me at a given point in time, even if they work really well for other people, because I'm a big believer in whatever works and that that is not necessarily what works for you is not necessarily what works for me. And life is this ongoing process. And we all, we're always changing, by the way. So something right. that might not be helpful to us at one point in our lives, later down the road might be absolutely helpful and vice versa. Maybe something that was helpful is no longer because everything's changing. Life is changing. We're changing. Things are not static. Um, if something works for you and it continues to work for you, then it just makes sense to keep doing it. If something isn't working for you, then it makes sense to say, you know, this isn't working. Is there a way I can do it differently? Or maybe just put it aside and try something else. And not the important piece here is to then not fault yourself, not scold yourself, not blame yourself, shame yourself, as they say, whatever. Um, in fact, the way I see it is you get credit for showing up. You get credit just for having done the thing for having explored it, even if the results are terrible or, you know, uh, it, you get credit because you did something, you know, it takes effort and initiative and an openness and willingness to try anything new. And to me, that's where you get the credit for showing up. Whatever then comes of it or doesn't is information that you then take with you as you move forward. So that, that's how I see it. Well, you know, the interesting part is um, intellectually, I know all this, okay? And I agree <laughs> with you and, I, you know, and I can say it over and over again, but there mm. are certain things that when I make a commitment to, and especially mm. if it's a public commitment, um, mm -hmm. I feel like I should be following the rules. And again, I'm now just starting to understand that this training, this class 
there aren't rules. And they even say that over and over again. Okay. If you, you know, if you can't do this exercise now or it didn't work for you, you know, don't beat yourself so they've up. They've given you yeah. permission to not beat yourself up. Absolutely. Anyway. And yet I've been beating myself yeah. up. Yeah. And that's why today when I started realizing, you know what, I'm not going to beat myself up anymore. It is okay. Um, and maybe along the line, I'll, I'll hear something or view something that I'll say, yeah, you know, I want to try that. Then I will. Um, it's not like I'm, I've closed off to it. I'm learning, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm doing everything that they are recommending, um, at least in their sequence. And when I share this with somebody else today, um, the comment was, well, then why don't you just quit the group? And I said, because I still have five weeks to learn more. And so, again, you know, I may not be doing everything in the way that they, you know, recommending, but I'm learning, even mm. if I'm sitting back, just watching. Yeah. And, and again, it's, it's, <laughs> I have a lot of things I can potentially say here. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll try to parse them out. The first thing is, is that when you started speaking in the, uh, about this in the, in in this last piece, the word that jumped out at me, even though you said it in passing very quickly, was should. Yeah, it's very yeah. easy to catch other people using this word and, and a lot harder to catch ourselves using it. Right. I should be doing th it this way. I should be doing X, Y, or Z. And that's always, to me, it's a red flag word. When I, when I catch myself, um, you know, should according to whom? And should is should to me implies that it's not something you really want to do. Ah, I should clean my room. Yeah. Like it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you only should should be doing things you <laughs> want to do in life, right? But um it's a it's a it's a hint. It's it's information when you're using the word should, it means that there's a feeling of obligation involved and not uh, it's like there's reluctance, Yep. you know? And so I, I think it's, it can be helpful to say when you catch yourself using the word should, according to, to ask yourself, according to whom? And also why? You should be doing something, why? Because other people say, or because you want to look a certain way, you want to be seen a certain way, or because, like, why? Why? And it's just by asking yourself these questions, it can help you relax a little bit, um, it, it can, it, you know, not, it won't always do this necessarily, but I think it can be helpful. To, it, it sort of gives you a little bit of distance and, and saying, okay, well, why, why am I so caught up in this? Or why is this bothering so, me so much? Or why do I feel the need to be, let's say, perfect or come across as perfect or, or whatever it is. And it, it, just by asking that question, sometimes it can help us loosen our rigidity and relax a little bit and see things from another point of view. When we first started this conversation, you were saying that the thing the thing that was difficult for you was basically saying no to people and and setting boundaries, even if you knew that these boundaries were good for you and important for you. And it, you know, when, for instance, when you t say to someone, uh, "I won't be able to do this show or interview or whatever until X, you know, amount of time in the future or whatever." you don't owe them any explanation as to why that's your your you are asserting this is what is available this is what i can do and then you it sounded like you said you felt guilty because part of you said oh really you can't do it sooner than that what um but this and is that, about that again was my internal voice oh, saying no 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 yeah, i understand yeah, yeah. And, okay. and this is about boundary setting and this is about not necessarily what we can do. It's what we are willing to do. It's what we are agreeing and agreeable to do. Taking into account everything, including our own well-being. Like, you know, sure, you could get by on an hour or two less of sleep every night. But is that in your best interest? Like, you won't die, most likely, from doing that. 
I mean, you could <laughs> yeah. if you're sleepy and you get into a car. I mean, but you know, you, you see what I'm saying is like, yeah. just because you can do something, at least theoretically, it doesn't mean that it's in your best interest to do it. And it's really important to value yourself and your own, you know, when you, I've learned over the years that when I commit to something, to be very careful about what I commit to, um, and to take it seriously, um, and to not make a commitment that even if I could make, for whatever reason, I'm not willing to, it's not the timing isn't right or, or what have you. Um, and I'm not perfect at this, I'm, I, you know, I'm human, I'm a work in progress, but I've gotten better over the years and I've learned that if you find yourself doing things very reluctantly because you've committed to them, to me, when I have that experience, it makes me say to myself, I need to be more mindful the next time I commit to something and make sure that, because I want to be able to do things um, optimally like, like you, and I want to be able to be present for things and bring my best self to them and do the best job I can with them. And there is such a thing as being overtaxed. And when you were describing your relentless schedule of just avoid the maze, right? Like in addition to whatever other podcast you're doing, you, I think, wisely recognized it was too much absolutely and so you backed off and you calibrated and that's what we're always doing by the way we're calibrating you know if something is out of sync or if it's then we we adjust and that part you did very like you that was i thought like you you used your own wisdom to do something that's going to work better for you and quite frankly for everyone else involved um where you like, you know, the, the problem is, is that after that, you then gave yourself a guilt trip about it. And then you started judging yourself for it. Exactly. And that that's where, you know, you did yourself a disservice. But keep in mind that um, it's, it's so funny. I don't know what it is about your show that makes me want to quote Billy Joel. Oh, I love uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to like almost every other episode, I'm quoting a song of his, but he has a wonderful, he has many wonderful songs, but he has a wonderful song a very little known song of his called James from an album um, called Turnstiles. Anyway, in the song, he has the lyric, he's singing this song to, uh, a, uh, he's imagining this friend that he grew up with and the different paths they, they each took in their lives. And he's wondering how this friend is doing with the various decisions that he made. Sure. And he's having this conversation with this friend, not in reality, but just in his mind, like wondering, hey, you know, um, did this work out for you? How did it go? You know, and he's comparing their different paths. He says, I went on the road, you pursued an education. And he's just wondering how this friend of his is doing. And at one point he says in the song, um, he knows that this friend was the kind of, was a people pleaser and was doing things like according to how you're supposed to do and according to what everybody, you know, buy the book and like you're right. supposed to do this and then you do that. And, um, and he's wondering how that like worked out. And he says to him, uh, do what's good for you or you're not good for anybody. So if these things, you know, now those things might be what other people want and expect of you, but they might not. Um, it's nice when those things overlap and you don't have to sweat it, but it's really important to recognize when something, is it working for you? And if not, why are you doing it? You don't have to see that's the thing is like we think we have to do things and and we don't um now there's always consequences to whatever we do or we don't do but what can surprise us is that we can learn to live with certain consequences that we thought might be unbearable we thought it might be unbearable to say no to somebody and then we yep. do it and they're like oh okay I'll, in september I'll, I'll write mark and like to them like they didn't even care and to, right so um you have to consider yourself in the equation especially, you know, if you're the type of person you want to be all things to all people, you want to be, I mean, really, you just want to be your best for yourself and others. I think that's fair, right? And a lot of us feel that way. Well, you have to acknowledge the for yourself part too, because you're not doing anyone else a favor if you're doing something at the, you know, that's not good for you. Absolutely. And, you know, again, like I've said, you know, Intellectually, I know this, mm. um, but when you've spent the majority of your life, okay, 
waiting for somebody to say something negative to you. Okay. Um, and one of these days I might get into deep therapy to figure out why I've been waiting for that, but it's not as prevalent anymore, but it seemed to start to come out. Like I said, um, in this training where I chose that I needed to start making better choices for me. Okay. And I know those better choices for myself would reflect better for the people around me. In the little bit that I'm doing so far, I do see that. Um, in fact, the first week I kept saying to my husband, Shh, be quiet, I'm doing my exercise. And he'll look at me going like, you're just sitting in a chair, what are you doing? Um, and I didn't want to explain it. It just, it took too much energy. But now I've realized that I can do them well, I'm having a podcast. Well, my husband is on the other side of the desk, you know, talking to himself. And I think I'm supposed to be listening. I'm learning how to take those two minutes and just taking it for me. But up until this week and today, especially, I kept thinking, but I'm not doing it right. And then this light bulb went off and said, exactly what you did, right for who? Yeah, right. And according to yeah. whom? Yeah. yeah, exactly. You said uh, just a moment ago that you're always waiting for someone to say something negative. Now, I think I know what you were inferring, what what came next after that. Like, I think I know what the because was or so that I can. I think I know what was yeah. next, but I don't want to make a, an assumption there. And so I just want to explore that comment a little bit. You're always waiting. That was the word you used. You're always waiting for yeah because someone to say something negative what do you mean by that and why are you why do you do that and what what is that about i'm not sure why i do it um but i know growing up i always thought everybody else was smarter than me mm -hmm. uh better equipped than me everything you know everybody was better and um i it was almost like i knew i was going to make a mistake whatever that meant, um, you know, put on the wrong clothes, uh, study the wrong chapter for a test, uh, not washing my mother's dishes the way she wanted them washed. So I was always waiting for somebody to say, aha, you did it wrong. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten better as I've, as I've matured and become an adult. Um, and especially in the last, um, 10 years, you know, was like, why am I waiting? Okay, let's not wait. Um, but it's still an old tape that goes through my head. And every once in a while, it's like, Karen, you didn't do that exercise. Oh, why didn't you do it? Oh, there it is. You know, I knew that was going to happen. So when you say waiting for someone to, uh, call you out or say something negative or do a gotcha on you. Yep. Um, what is waiting? How does that help you? Or how does that serve you by waiting for it? Um, it doesn't. And that's why I'm working real hard mm. to get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I see it as you're bracing yourself for it. Yeah. Like you're anticipating it with dread and you're you're i'm guessing wanting to prevent it from happening before it does right, right. so like you want to catch yourself before and your mistakes before someone else does exactly so that they won't so you won't have to feel the pain of their judgment is that i mean does that, that that's exa that's exactly it and yeah. what i've realized um and I don't know how long it's been, but what I've realized is that making those mistakes actually has made me smarter, make <laughs> better choices. But sometimes we don't allow ourselves to look at it that way. Okay. And I was one of those people that for most of my life, I didn't look at it that way. Oh, a mistake was a mistake. Slap on the hand, you know, uh, take take two steps backwards because you made a mistake. Now it's more like, 
oh, yeah, that wasn't right. How, you know, how can I make it right? You know, um, or do I have to make it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, and mistakes, mistakes, it's, it's an interesting word because sometimes it's it's objectively true. Like sometimes there's a correct way to do something. And if you if you didn't do it the correct way, then you, you've done it incorrectly and, and therefore it's a mistake. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but other times mistakes are subjective. Like what I right. see as a mistake, someone else might see as something awesome. You know, this happens all the time in creative work. Right, exactly. You make a mistake and that mistake is what makes the thing so great. So also an another thought about mistakes is just that when you're doing everything right all the time, quote, right, correctly all the time, and you don't make any mistakes, are you learning anything? Probably yeah. not. So we don't like to make mistakes and no one wants to do things incorrectly and you know, make blunders and, you know, like slip ups and, and maybe whatever, like no one, no one, I don't know anyone that really enjoys doing that. But in hindsight, those are the aha moments. Those are the learning moments. The, that's how you get better at things. You can't learn anything new without making mistakes. It's not possible. It's part of the learning. So, um, and again, you know, all this, I, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Um, I, you know, one thing that I find really helpful is, and I, I think, you, tell me what you think of this. <sighs> Rather than bracing yourself for the unhappiness of others and the judgment of others about how you're performing, what I think is a helpful thing to do, and this may take time, but is to get better at becoming your own best friend. That might sound corny. I don't, I don't really care how it sounds. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> it's a big life thing. Big, big life sure. thing. If you can get better at becoming your own best friend, then everything is easier. Everything is easier. If you make a mistake, you don't have to incur the wrath, your own wrath and, and, and self-derision about it. Um, and so there, as you go, okay, well, how do I learn to become my own best friend? How do I get better at doing that? So that whatever other people are doing to me or, or however they're behaving toward me, I don't have to internalize it so much. And I can, you know, be supportive of myself instead of exacerbating the, the whole thing. Right. And for me, I mean, one of the, one of the tools, one of the like essentials in, uh, in, do, in doing this over the years for myself has been journaling. Yep. You don't have, I mean, there are, other, there are other things that work, but generally what they, they involve taking a moment, taking the time on a regular basis to be with yourself and to acknowledge yourself. You said earlier in this conversation that we all, we all need acknowledgement. I think that's pretty true. I, you know, um, and, and we often don't get it, especially from places where we might really yearn sure. for it. You know, we might really yearn for our parents approval. Who the hell doesn't <laughs> no matter what, right? Like, you know, it's right. like, a, no matter how old you are or whatever, as an example. Now, those parents may or may not be capable of giving you that or willing and or able to give you that specific approval or validation or acknowledgement that you're so desperately seeking. Well, the only person that absolutely can do it all the time when you need it is you. And so if you come up with a practice and it can be incorporated into journaling, but if you come up with a practice, uh, you know, and call it whatever you want, do it however you want. Again, do this in a way that works for you. Not in a, not, don't make this another should on your plate or a have to or an obligation. But what I find is, is that acknowledging myself for efforts made, regardless of what comes of them, I showed up, I made the effort and I get credit just for doing that to myself. I give myself credit. I'm acknowledging myself, even if it ended in rejection, even if it ended in things not going the way I wanted, even if whatever, it doesn't matter. 
the more you can give yourself credit and acknowledgement for the things that you've done to make yourself proud, to do right by yourself, the more you're going to improve that relationship with yourself. And it's going to show, it's going to inevitably um, show up in the way that you relate to others and the way that you um, just appear in the world. So. Well, you know, I think it's a great idea that we pat ourselves on the back. Um, and that's one of the things I wanted to do today, not necessarily pat myself on the back, but to open up and say, hey, you know, I can do so many things the way I would like to do them. There's certain things that I haven't found the right techniques yet. Um, and, you know, I'm always out there wanting to learn. And I know there are other people out there as well who say, oh, I'm going to go take this self-help um, class. And, you know, at the end of seven weeks, I'm going to be knowing exactly Warm. what to do. <laughs> and what this class is doing for me, it's reinforcing things that I already knew. Okay. Um, it is helping me slow down, which is what I really knew that I needed to do. Um, and it's helping me reflect at the end of the day as well. Um, there is journaling with it, but I don't necessarily journal for them. Um, in fact, I didn't feel like journaling last night at all. Uh, this morning, some self-reflection and I didn't really answer the questions they were asking because that's not what was important to me right now. Um, and I guess that's what I wanted to share through this conversation is that, you know, certain places we have to follow rules. Okay. Certain jobs, certain, um, at certain ages with parents and, and adults. Yes. There are certain rules that have to be adhered to, but when it comes to our thinking and our, um, self-care, we all have to find what works for us. And um, and uh, listen, Karen, I want to acknowledge you just for your taking this class. Again, whatever comes of it, whether it fulfills your hopes or not, whatever you get out of it, whether it's what was you were supposed to get out of it or not, like you get credit in my book, and hopefully you'll give yourself credit for showing up just for honestly, just for taking the time out of your life to do something in the interest of helping yourself, whether it works, whether it helps, whatever comes of it, to me, that's the win. Like you are, and you're trying something new and you're having your reactions and that's very human and normal, you know? And, but I just want to say one thing I wanted to add just to that thing about being your own best friend and acknowledging yourself. Yes, it's possible to do this silently and give yourself the proverbial or even the literal physical pat on the back, but there's something to me about putting it down in writing. And, that, and that's why I suggested journaling, because journaling is just a private, you know, place where you can do this. And there's no, you don't have to worry about, oh, other people, whatever other, whatever other anyone else thinks is completely irrelevant. It's you, it's your relationship with yourself. And by putting it in writing, I think it really makes the acknowledgement a lot firmer. And, and it, it, it really helps it to, to sink in, especially because you can flip back and revisit it if you want Absolutely. and you're not you're not it's not depending it's, you know, you're not dependent on remembering to do it or you know so that that's my suggestion about that oh uh, i love it so tell our viewers and listeners how can they find you because i'll tell everybody out there um i probably uh have to pay for a coaching session now with eric after this um but you know, I know there are people out there looking for a coach, looking for a way to better themselves. So how can they find you? My website is the easiest thing. It's just my name, ericteplitz.com. And I do offer a lot of stuff for free, including actually, if anyone is interested in a having the experience of a coaching call with me, I do a free call and there's no, it's zero pressure um, no obligation, just so that you can have the experience for yourself of being coached and seeing how it feels. And you might decide after having that experience, 
whatever you decide, you might say, you know what, coaching seems great, but this Eric guy is not right for me. I need to find someone that, that feels right for me. Like that's completely and totally fine. <laughs> um, so I just want to extend that invitation to anyone who's, who happens to be listening or watching. Um, coaching can be a really helpful tool just because you're not just dependent on yourself and what's going on in your own head. You can get some objectivity from a coach. You can get some other ideas and support from a coach. And you can sometimes honestly just being heard and just even verbalizing what's going on with yourself, actually saying it out loud and having another human being bear witness to it. And, and sometimes that's that's all that you need. Sometimes you then figure out for yourself, oh, what, what, whatever it is you need next, just from having done that. So well, happy I to be that, that person. <laughs> well, we'll have all that information in the show notes. Uh, and as always, thank you for our monthly conversation. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I have one more podcast, and then I have a little break. And I think during that break, I'm just going to go do something good for me. Excellent. Have a it's great a day, everybody. I, I love seeing yeah. everyone. Take good care. Thanks, Karen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.